what's going on investors welcome back to the channel so it is the end of the year today is the 30th of december 2022 and this is the last trading day of the year first of all before i dive into today's content i would love to say thank you very much for always supporting me on this channel thank you for the likes for the comments, for criticizing me, for supporting me, for everything that you have contributed to this channel one way or the other, either negatively or positively. Thank you so much. And this is the last video of this year. Hopefully next year is going to be an amazing year for we buy an genomics holder, or if you are invested in other genomic stocks like Pacific Bioscience of California, 10X Genomics, Oxford Nanopore, Illumina, among others. I hope next year is going to be an amazing, profitable year for every one of us. So in this video, I am going to be talking about adoption in this video. OK, um, but before we continue, OK, these are some of the videos that, you know, we have recently, you know, um, posted what that I have, you know, shared with you guys on this channel. You know, um, I used to make a lot of videos, you know, using just the camera from my telephone, from my smartphone or from the laptop. But right now, you know, I increased uh, on my equipment. OK, I bought a new camera, a new mic so that I can provide you guys with better quality content so instead of like i used to do before you know pumping out videos like four or five videos every day now i am more or less focused on quality instead of quantity so these are some of the videos that you know we already um, um watched you know hopefully you know most of you guys have seen all of these videos and you have been able to learn one or two things about bio nanogenomics so in this video we are going to be talking about adoption then we are going to talk about the pressure press action of bio nanogenomics from the beginning of the year till the end of the year and how we are closing the year and uh, my opinion on next quarter okay so this gentleman right here his name is alexander Reykovich, okay, he is the chief genomic officer at UCSF, okay, health. And UCSF just made, you know, this man just made a tweet about a paper that, you know, UCSF is also part of, okay, about bio-nanogenomics adoption, about the concordance of bio-nanogenomics, okay, with um other, you know, traditional methods of analyzing genomes for um structural variants. Now, if you take a look at this, this is UCS, UCSF health.org and they have a lot of locations okay this is not you know just um a an hospital that you know has one location you guys can see it's based in california i believe you can see some of their locations okay san francisco california you know um fresno california it goes on and on this is a very large hospital santa rosa and they have different you know um specialty kidney transplants and if you go further down you can see cancer center redwood city cancer center san mateo you know it goes on and on so this hospital is right now piloting the sapphire device they are using the sapphire device and um hopefully they are going to be switching it over okay to the standard of care okay I don't know if they are going to be using it or if they are already using it with, you know, the likes of, you know, um, devices from Illumina or from PacBio. But one thing I know is that they are already using the Sapphire device. And this is a good news for buying an genomics. OK, next year, hopefully it's going to be a big year for buying an genomics. You know, we were expecting some press releases from BNGO and until now, nothing from buying an genomics. In the, you know, earnings call of the fourth quarter, I hope they are going to be talking about why we didn't get those two, you know, press releases. I'm, I'm still going to talk about that, you know, um, later towards the end of this video. So this is UC SF Health, okay? Somebody that is right now a customer of Bionana Genomics or a hospital that is now a customer of BNG. So this right here is the press release. I just made a um, tweet a couple of minutes ago. Multi-site evaluation and validation of optical genome mapping, okay, for prenatal genetic testing. This is a very wonderful news, guys. Prenatal is huge market, okay. And um, so now they are more or less changed you know validating the concordance of optical genome mapping the sapphire device you know with old method of, of analyzing genomes okay we have co-first co-corresponding affiliations okay you have you know this is the hospital greenwood sc usa division of human genetic university of rochester medical center rochester new york city greenwood genetic center greenwood south carolina uh, university of california just it goes on and you also have 
quest diagnostics okay so this is something big and then you have you know professor um brian levy i'm familiar with this gentleman professor of pathology at and cell biology director clinical cytogenetics laboratory columbia university so this more or less like up to genome mapping or emerging technique with application for prenatal diagnosis because of its ability to detect and resolve a single assay all classes of pathogenetic cytogenetic aberrations detectable by karyotype in FISH and microarray. Okay, not to waste your time. If you go further, you can find out about, you know, the method they use, the cohort design, sample preparation and processing, and so on and so forth. Like, you know, we always discuss on this channel. So if you go further down, you can see, okay, some of the, some of the images of, you know, um, the concordances. And then, you know, you have you have the um karyotyping okay um uh, they are also con comparing it you know with binary genomics this is another case karyotyping right here 3b this is karyotyping guys so if you want to check the conclusion okay the conclusion let me look for it the conclusion about this you know this research eh? oh shit, I know. So, sorry about that, guys. Conclusion says OGM has the potential of significantly impact cytogenomic diagnostics in the prenatal setting by offering the combined diagnostic power of karyotyping, FISH, and CMA in a single assay. In addition to detecting large-scale copy number changes and sub microscopic cnvs ogm also may uncover balanced structural rearrangements and characterize their specific architecture highlighting disrupted genes at the breakpoint regions although not described in this study a similar study on postnatal disorders has demonstrated that ogm has the ability to to detect specific repeat expansion signatures such as seen in the fragile x syndrome um the standardized workflow and cost effectiveness of ogm coupled with its ability to provide high resolution cytogenomic analysis in a single assay indicates that ogm has the potential to serve as a first tier diagnostic test for prenatal diagnosis diagnosis now this is the plan guys we want ogm to be first tier diagnostic you know test for you know prenatal analysis diagnosis you have postnatal you know diagnosis or analysis then you you know you have all that things going on okay um developmental delay and so on and so forth so that is the plan guys we want ogm to be the first and now they have the content disclosure all this you know bio nanogenomics also participated in this uh, study i mean this is good for bio nanogenomics you know from you know coming from ucsf health okay this is very good this is california you know bio nanogenomics is based in uh, san diego so if this kind of large hospital with different location you know can adopt more software devices okay this is going to be good um income for bio nanogenomics we're talking about you know um revenue now right now this is what bio nanogenomics looks like at the moment guys we are we seems to be closing the year below you know 1.5 us dollars which of course is not good okay and um like i have been sharing with you guys i believe the reason is because you know first of all bio nanogenomics is yet to you know drop the next pre they have two press releases that you know they're supposed to drop in the fourth quarter of you know this year but unfortunately till now there is nothing from bng okay we're talking about 7.0 ns clinical software and then we are talking about the commercial version of the sapphire device the next generation sapphire device with higher throughput there is also nothing about that and um you know maybe today maybe if the market closes today we are going to finally hear something from bng but you know till now you know if the market closed then the year is already over it means we are not going to be closing the year at you know my first press target which of course was you know on um, three us dollars okay three us dollars guys so um it seems we are going to be closing the year at um just a second i need to adjust this so it seems we are going to be closing the year at you know um around this level which of course is a very strong support level okay this is where we are right now you guys can see i mean this is a, this seems to be a strong support level you know around one point the last time we got this low was back in um on uh, may this is when we got to around 1.18 you know 1.17 us dollars 
and then you know right now we are we seems to be back at around that level there is a support right here let's see what's going to happen guys let's all see what is going to happen i mean this is how we are closing the year no press release this is of course not you know encouraging of course the market is you know the sentiment of the market is bearish okay i understand that macro news you know we have a lot of things going on right now okay but still I expect BNGO to, you know, deliver, okay, but that is unfortunately not what we are seeing so far. And um, if you guys are wondering, you know, why this, you know, this is the monthly candlestick, guys, why this spike right here, okay, this was, you know, when we rallied and then buy an energy sold everything back now okay they raised some money in the third quarter of this year and uh, there is a possibility that you know they did the same in this um year uh, in this quarter they raised money during the third quarter and there is a possibility that you know they raised another money at you know during this fourth quarter okay because we still have this at the moment at the market dilution okay that is still going on with buying and genomics so i think that is that about that as you guys can see we used to be around here back in 2020 right now we are just you know a little bit above this level in 2022 who knows maybe in 2023 2024 we're gonna go up and then come back to this level i don't know but in, you know if i spot anything of course i will let you guys know this looks like you know a kind of breakout is going to happen i think there has to be a very good positive news so that we can see a breakout okay let's take a look at the um weekly candlestick this is what is going on you guys can see it's more or less like a pennant you know this more or less like you know looks also like a flag okay this is what is going on if we break to the upside this is, is going to be awesome if not if we break to the downside i think we are going to go towards this level once again okay this is where i got into bngo before that massive rally and since then i have been providing different content about the company okay i don't know maybe my content is one of the reasons why the stock price is still at this you know higher level i mean nobody knows so um that is that about that if you guys want to know more i already made a um post to the patron of this page okay today and if there is anything i always try to share it with you know my patron not only about buying and gentlemen but about the market in general as well so let me know what you guys think about this in the comment section i'm wishing you guys a happy new year in advance thank you so much for always supporting me on this channel i truly appreciate you guys and a massive thank you to all my patrons on this channel you guys are awesome ciao ciao